Hey guys, welcome back, and welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I hope your week's going well. So what we're doing here each week is trying to present an EKG and go through it together, you know, because we believe that practicing these will help us get better, and it's really what we need to do when we're given this in a clinical situation, be able to interpret it on our own, okay? So the idea here is we're using this system of approach, and it's probably going to change as we get better and as we uh, go along through this, but we're going to use this. So what you see here is the patient's uh, clinical presentation, the EKG below it, all right? And then on the right side of the screen, you have different areas that we're going to go through together, okay? So we're going to first read through this, and I'll go over these different areas, and then I want you to go through it on your own, and then we'll review it, all right? So first we have the regularity, okay? And what we mean about regularity is, are we dealing with a regular or irregular rhythm? And if it's irregular, is it regularly irregular or irregularly irregular, okay? Next, we have the heart rate. So simply just find the heart rate, and then we have the rhythm origin. That is, where is the rhythm actually starting from within the heart? Then we have the conduction aspects, atrial, AV, and IV, intraventricular, okay? And that way, that's where we want to look at, is the conduction normal or not? Then we have the waveforms, and this would include all the waves, the segments, and the intervals, taking a look at the morphology and if there's any abnormalities. And lastly, is there anything else? Meaning, is there anything else we have missed or still need to mention? Now, after that, we will use this information to make a final interpretation, okay? So let's get started. So our patient this week is a 53-year-old male that was referred to us with episodic chest pain and has this EKG. Pause the video and take a few minutes to go through it yourself. When you're ready, start the video and we'll go over it together. Okay, so we have our 53-year-old male that was referred to us with this episodic chest pain in this EKG. Okay, so the first step is, what is the regularity of this rhythm? Well, on first impression of this EKG, you probably notice that the rhythm appears quite regular. In fact, this is a regular rhythm, okay? So R for regular, and how do we know it's regular? Well, we're looking at the intervals. One of the best, the easiest ways to do it is to look at the R to R interval, okay? So if you use this R interval to this R wave, okay, these intervals, if you were to use your calipers or measure these all out, you'd see that these are all regular intervals. They're all the same length or duration, okay? So because we have R to R intervals that are consistent throughout, that's what we mean by a regular rhythm, okay? So the next thing is the heart rate, and what did you get here? Well, there's a couple ways we can calculate it, all right? So the actual heart rate, I'll give it to you now, was 87 beats per minute, okay? So let's try to do this ourselves. So one way to do it is by knowing that the duration of the EKG from beginning to the end represents 10 seconds, okay? And what we do by this is we count the number of complexes going across, and we use the QRSs because they're most distinct, and then we'll multiply that by 6 because 10 seconds times 6 gives us 60 seconds, which is will give us the beats per minute, okay? So let's try this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay? And then you would do 14 times 6 because it's that's over 10 seconds. So if we multiply that by 6, we get 84 beats per minute. Okay, quite a close estimate to the 87 that we have. Now, another way to do it, and you can use this with irregular rhythms, but because we have a regular rhythm, we can also use a, an easy method. And that's by taking a complex that falls on the one of the thick lines, so if we use this one, and we look for the next R interval, so this one right here, we're going to count the number of thick lines until the next one, all right? Meaning that here's one, two, three, okay? So just a little over three. And what you would do here is you would do 300 over three, and that equals 100, okay? But it's a little more than three, so it's really between three and four. So if we do 300 over four is 75. So it's really between 75 and 100, okay? Again, the real actual heart rate on the EKG strip was 87 beats per minute. Okay, so that's our, we got the regularity, regular rhythm, our rate is 87 beats per minute. Now, what did you get for the rhythm origin? Well, we have narrow QRS complex, so it should indicate that we have some sort of supraventricular rhythm, meaning it's coming from above the ventricles. We can also make out the clear, defined, similar shaped P waves here. So do we have sinus rhythm here? Well, let's see. So what do we mean by sinus rhythm? Okay, so some of the features we want to look for are 
in the inferior leads, specifically here's two, three, and AVF, okay? Lead two, we see these upright P waves. Okay, you can sort of see them here in three as well, as well as in AVF, all right? And then if you look at the left lateral leads, okay, so here's V4, V5, and V6, you can also make out some upright P waves, okay, in these leads as well. And then if we look at AVR, here's AVR, we should see inverted P waves, all right? And that's what we see. So we have um, the upright P waves in those inferior and left lateral leads, as well as inverted P waves uh, in AVR, okay? And then we should look into see, are they the similar morphology? And they are, okay? All those P waves look the same. We don't have any ectopic atrial rhythm here, okay? <clears throat> the next thing is, do we have P waves coming before each QRS complex, okay? So let's look at that. We have a P wave here, QRS complex again, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, okay? And if you were to go through this, here's a P wave and QRS, you'd see that there's always one P wave uh, for each QRS complex. So there's that one-to-one -one ratio, okay? And that's something we see in sinus rhythm, all right? Now, just for, so you're aware, if we look at our system, right? And what we have is the normal P wave axis comes down between zero and positive 75 degrees, okay? So within this region. And the reason we see those upright P waves in those leads we mentioned, if you imagine here's lead one, here's lead two, here's lead AVF, and lead three, okay? So what you have is a P wave axis that's heading downward and leftward, okay, in the frontal plane. And that's why as it heads towards those leads, remember V4, V5, and V6 are about here, those precordial leads. And that's why we're seeing those upright P waves in those leads, okay? So even in lead one, we can see those upright P waves, okay? So just so you're aware of why in sinus rhythm, and if you remember, AVR is over here, so we have a positive depolarization wave moving away from AVR, and that's why we see negative P waves that we mentioned here in AVR, okay? So that's sinus rhythm. So our rhythm origin is from the sinus node. Okay, meaning that's we're in sinus rhythm. Now, how about atrial conduction? Well, typically we look at leads two and lead V1 for the P waves or looking for atrial abnormalities. They are there in V1, but more evident here in lead two. They appear normal with duration that's within normal limits. Remember that normal duration of P waves in adults is usually less than 120 milliseconds, which is three small boxes, okay? So again, our P waves, we said that we look let's just erase so we can see what's going on here okay so we said we look at lead two and lead v1 okay hard to make them out here in v1 but you can certainly see them here in lead two all right and within normal limits now how about the av or atrioventricular conduction okay so let's put normal for this well av conduction what we're looking here is the impulse traveling between the atrium and ventricles, okay? And because the majority of the PR interval represents AV nodal conduction, we're gonna look there. The normal PR interval in adults is between 120 and 200 milliseconds, or three to five small boxes, okay? And if you look here, it's actually within normal limits. Now, if you remember, when we talk about kids, usually uh, they have a smaller PR interval and that tends to increase over time with age up until this range of 120 to 200 milliseconds in adulthood. Okay, so now AV conduction, remember that's from, remember if we're looking at our complex here, the PR interval is from the beginning of the P wave up until the beginning of our QRS complex, okay? So this right here is our PR interval. We said it should be between 120 and 200 milliseconds, okay? And if you look here, let's just erase so we can get a better idea. What we're looking at here, here's a P wave. This is our QRS complex. So we're looking from the beginning to there, all right? And one thing you wanna look at, remember this 200 milliseconds, that upper range is really five small boxes okay or it's one of the thick lines so between of those okay so that's one way for you to you know just roughly get an estimate if you're looking so again our av conduction here is normal okay now we're on iv or intraventricular conduction and here we're going to look at the qrs duration or the qrs interval now the normal qrs duration is between 80 and 110 milliseconds or about two to three small boxes in adults and we can see that here, narrow QRS complexes that are within normal limits. In fact, the QRS duration here is 102 milliseconds, okay? So 102 milliseconds, that means we have a 
normal, right? It's within our 80 to 100 and 10 range okay and so we have normal IV conduction okay remember what we're looking here is from the beginning of our QRS to the end of it okay that's what we mean by the QRS interval if it's prolonged we might think of some conduction delay or aberrant conduction okay but in this case it's normal so how about the waveforms? Well, we said the P waves here are normal, okay? They're normal sinus P waves. Now, the T waves are present, they're asymmetric, and appear normal. The PR segment is not significantly depressed or elevated. The PR and QRS intervals, we said, were within normal limits. The ST segment, right, does not appear significantly elevated or depressed anywhere. And the QT interval appears within normal limits. Actually, the QT interval here was 360 milliseconds, and the QTC, which corrects for heart rate, was 433 milliseconds, okay? So no major waveform abnormalities, so we will just write normal here, okay? So is there anything else we're missing here? Well, not that I can see. Now, the ventricular axis is, or the QRS axis, is actually normal here. Okay, we'll take a look at that just so you know how to find that. There's also normal R wave progression in the precordial leads, but really nothing else that we're missing. Okay, so let's just look at that ventricular axis quickly. Okay, let's erase some of this, make some room. Because I, I know some people have trouble with it, and I, I don't think it's that difficult once you know how to do it. So let's draw our quadrant system here. Again, this is zero degrees. This would be positive 90 degrees, plus or minus 180 degrees, okay, and minus 90 degrees. Now our normal QRS axis lies between in this quadrant, okay, right here. This would be right, uh, excuse me, left axis deviation, right axis deviation, and then extreme right axis deviation, or no man's land okay so this is l now normal qrs axis actually lies from negative 30 degrees to about positive 105 okay but within this region is normal all right we won't need much more here so what do we do here well we look at lead one that sits here and lead avf to start off okay that tends to be the easiest some people can count up the inferior leads and you can tell from that that it's normal but for beginners let's just start here so lead one it's mostly positive. That means we're heading towards the positive end of lead one. Okay, so let's use a different color. So we're heading in this direction. And then if we look at lead AVF, again, mostly positive. So we'll be heading this way. So what you see is that the axis actually lies within this region, which is considered normal. Okay, so that's why we said we had a normal QRS axis, okay, or ventricular axis. Now, we also mentioned that the we had normal R wave progression. Remember, R wave progression, what that means is this is the R wave, okay? These are the R waves throughout, okay? And when we talk about R wave progression in the precordial leads, we're talking about leads V1 through V6, and it should normally, the R wave should increase as we move to the left side of the heart because the left side has that left ventricle that's the biggest in mass, okay? And has the most electrical, you know, mean axis heading in that direction. So because of that, we should see an increase in the R waves as we go from lead V1 up until v5 okay and you see that notice that the r wave is slowly increasing in amplitude up until v5 okay that's what we mean by normal r wave progression all right so what's our final interpretation here well we have a regular sinus rhythm occurring at a normal rate okay at 87 beats per minute within our normal range of 60 to 100 in adults along with normal av atrioventricular and intraventricular conduction and no other waveform abnormalities we said the qrs the r wave progression are all normal so this is a case of normal sinus rhythm okay normal sinus rhythm sinus rhythm because we said that's where it's originating normal because it's falling within that range of 60 to 100 beats per minute in adults okay so in conclusion our 53 year old male patient that was referred to us with this episodic chest pain has an ekg that shows normal sinus rhythm so nothing for us to be too concerned about at least um, from this ekg well that's the end of this week's ekg of the week i hope you learned something Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. It helps us a lot and we really appreciate your support. Subscribe to the EKG Guys YouTube channel for free access to more than 300 videos, including both pediatric and adult EKG courses. We're the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.